Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Caroline. Welcome back to the sixth part of our course on Xcode tips and tricks. In this video, we'll have a look at the more visual side of Xcode in storyboards. We'll also take a look at some visual debugging. This is the storyboard in the Xcoder sample app. It's not a particularly complicated one because Xcoder isn't a big app. But you can see that it can be divided up into three logical sections. There's the main table view with its navigation controller. Then there's the shortcut entry screen with its navigation controller and a screen for entering new sections. And there's the view controller for displaying the PDF cheat sheet. In the demo, I'll show you how to split out the different sections into three different, more manageable storyboards using storyboard references. Here is main.storyboard pointing at two other storyboards for the shortcut detail and the PDF view controllers. Notice that the segues are still intact. As well as abstracting out these storyboards, having multiple storyboards means that people can work on the same project but only affect their own storyboards. That's better for Git merging. Later in the demo, we'll take a look at a great storyboard feature where you can have custom controls displaying in the storyboard using just one word, at IB Designable. The checkbox is rendering here in exquisite detail. You can also create custom properties changeable on the attributes inspector with at IB Inspectable. Here I have an at IB inspectable property that I can switch on and off and affect how the checkbox renders in the storyboard in real time. So let's jump into the demo and first let's split up the app's main.storyboard into manageable chunks. Here's the storyboard and you can see that there are three logical areas. There's the main table view and there's the shortcut detail and there's the PDF view controller. I'll highlight all three controllers for the shortcut detail. And these are the ones that I'm going to move out to a new storyboard. I've also highlighted the segues, which is why these areas that call these controllers are highlighted, but that won't be a problem. Choose Editor Refactor to Storyboard. Type the name Shortcut Detail. And make sure you change the group to the Xcoder folder, otherwise the file system will get confused. And make sure all targets are checked. And click Save. And now a brand new storyboard has been created with just those three view controllers. If we look back at main.storyboard, there's now a storyboard reference to the other storyboard. On the Attributes Inspector, we're referencing the other storyboard's initial view controller here, but it could reference the storyboard ID of any view controller in the other storyboard. In the challenge, you'll separate out the PDF view controller, and then you'll have separated out the storyboards into convenient chunks. Whenever I do restructuring such as this, I always clean the project with Shift Command K and then Command B to do a clean build to make sure that everything compiles. And it does. And back in shortcutdetail.storyboard, I'd like to point out an accessory view. In the app, I'm decorating the keyboard with Control Option Shift command buttons. It's really easy to customize the keyboard like this using an accessory view on the storyboard. Sometimes you have views stacked on views and it can be hard to find the right one. You can poke around in the hierarchy on the left, but often it's quicker to move your mouse over a control and then do control shift click. You then get a whole list of all the contents under the cursor position and you can select which one you want. Talking about views, we can debug the view hierarchy with the view debugger. I have a simple bug to demonstrate this. I'll add a completely blank shortcut. And the cell for this shortcut is squashed. Leaving the fact aside that there ought to be code in the app to make sure that no blank shortcut gets created, I really don't want that cell to be squashed. 
I remember that when I set up the cell, I had a view for minimum cell height. So let's have a look in the view debugger to see what height that minimum cell height view actually is. And this is the view, view debugger button. And we get this nice 3D hierarchy with various control buttons to configure the display. This is the row that I'm interested in, so I'll double click the back view to focus it. On the left, I have the hierarchy of views in the cell. And this must be the minimum height view, so I'll select that one. On the object inspector, we can see the view detail, and on the size inspector, we can look at the auto layout constraints. The view is only 24 high, and there doesn't seem to be a minimum height constraint on it, so I'll go and create one. I'll make the cell a height of 60, but I don't want it to be exactly 60, so I'll change it so it's at least 60, and build and run, and everything's sorted. That was an easy bug to catch, but the view debugger is wonderful when you have complex view hierarchies and a particular view isn't where it's meant to be. Now let's look at the checkbox in the storyboard. I can zoom in using Option plus mouse. It's hard to see because it's plain white. I'd really like to have a preview of how it looks during runtime. I'll select the checkbox and it's a bit overshadowed by the auto layout constraints. So I'll turn those off in Editor, Canvas, Show Constraints. And now we'll concentrate on rendering the checkbox control in the storyboard. As long as the controls framework is embedded inside the project as ours is, we can do this with at IB Designable. Press Shift Command O and type check and checkbox.swift is the one highlighted. Hold down Option and press Return and checkbox.swift opens up in the Assistant Editor. Just above the class declaration, type at IB Designable and press Command S to save it. And the storyboard should compile, but notice there's a compile message. If you're using init coder in your class, just as we are, IB Designable requires init frame to be de defined as well. So I'll create init frame. You'd often use at IB Designable combined with the UI views draw method, but we're not using that here. There are two methods that we're using that format the view, common init and update appearance. So I'll add those two to init frame. And the checkbox now appears on the storyboard. I'd like to see what the checkbox looks like in the storyboard with a green tick. So with the checkbox selected, Option Command 4 shows the Attributes Inspector. I'm going to change a property in checkbox.swift so that I get a custom property on the Attributes Inspector and so I'll be able to configure the checkbox in the storyboard itself. We do this by decorating the property with the at IB Inspectable attribute. I'd like to add this to the is checked property so that I can see the checkbox in Interface Builder change color but you can't use IB Inspectable with custom types like filter. So I'm going to create a new property just for Interface Builder. Here I have an Inspectable property. This property won't be used at runtime, but when I change it in Interface Builder, if checked is true, then is checked will be changed to done. If it's not true, then is checked will be none. And when is checked is changed, it automatically updates its own appearance. Now I can look in the checkbox attributes inspector, and there's our property, and turn the check mark on and off, and get a great preview of what the app will look like when I run it. 
That's it for this video tutorial, but as always, we like to end with a challenge. My challenge to you is to separate out the PDF View Controller with its navigation controller into their own storyboard. This should be quite easy, but if you get stuck and you're having problems, check out the challenge video solution for the answer. In the next video, we're going to look further at debugging with breakpoints. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. In your challenge, I ask you to separate out the PDF view controller into its own storyboard. And here's how I do it. In main.storyboard, draw a selection box over the two controllers and choose editor, refactor to storyboard. Name the storyboard PDF storyboard, change the group to be the Xcoder folder and remember to check both targets. If you don't check them both, Xcoder Lite won't include the storyboard in its bundle. And then save the storyboard. In the file inspector, click localize and localize again. And drag both the storyboards down to main.storyboard. And we can make the app cleaner by placing all the storyboards in their own folder. and Shift-Command-K for a clean build and run the app to check it.